I am ready. Okay, welcome to the Story Planning Commission meeting for November 28th, 2018. Please call the roll. Mr. Cappers? Here. Mr. McGarry? Here. Mayor Beamish? Here. Mr. Mahan? Here. Mrs. Snead? Here. Mr. Titterington? Here. Mr. Wolke? Here. All members are present. Okay, we have three sets of minutes to consider, uh, and consider them either individually or in bank. They are of our October 10th meeting, our October 24th meeting, and our November 14th meeting. Are there any corrections, deletions, or additions to those minutes? On the 14th, near the end, just before the city, city beautification plans, mm -hmm. it indicates that I had noted several members of the ATP. Oh, sorry. I think that was you? the current incumbent. Yes. That's fine. I'll change that. Thank you. Okay. Other than that amendment, are there any additions, corrections, or deletions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept those minutes. So moved. All three? Mr. Wolf, all three. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Please call the vote. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mrs. D? Yes. Mr. Titterington? Yes. Mr. Wolke? Yes. Mr. Captain? Yes. Approved. First matter to come before the commission today is the historic district application for 405 Public Square for wall sign. Does staff have a report? Yes, we do. The applicant is Michael Farron, who is in the um, audience today. He's requesting Planning Commission approve uh, a wall sign at 405 Public Square. Uh, the building at 405 Pub Public Square is on the National Register. Um, my report does list some of the distinguishing features, such as tall window openings, decorative hood molds, painted cast iron columns, supporting brick and pilaster, dimples, etc. The building is permitted to have a total of 30 square feet in signage. This individual tenant is permitted to have 1.88 square feet for signage. Um, the applicant is proposing to install one wall sign measuring 1.5 square feet. Um, the sign will be placed underneath the existing mail slot, which there's a picture in your packet. The sign is made of a quarter inch thick aluminum core with a white background. And then I've included a breakdown of all the colors within the packet. This is the actual sign. So, staff is recommending approval um, based on that it will meet all City of Troy sign code requirements and the proposed sign does not detract from the aesthetics of the village. Questions of staff? The rest of the signage is shown on that board. Is that going to remain? Yes. That's in addition to I move to approve. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. <clears throat> Mayor? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Titterington? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Cappers? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Approved. Next matter is for the installation of solar panels on the south side of a portion of uh, property at 882 Cross Cove Lane. Does staff have a report? Yes, sir, we do. Uh, the applicants, um, the Gremlins, who are the property owners, and the um, contractor Power Home Solar, which uh, Paul from Power Home uh, Solar is here if you have any questions. They're requesting the solar panels to be added to the south side uh, face of the roof for this property. Um, they are a roof mounted system. And due to their location, the Planning Commission has to approve that location. The ordinance specifies anything that faces or is visible from the public right of way fronting the property needs Planning Commission approval. Panels, like I mentioned, are being installed on the south side portion of the roof. The total square footage of the eight panels is 140 square feet with an anti-reflective coating and considered flush mounted house does face the east but this section of the roof is south side other than that the application has been reviewed and will meet all other zoning requirements uh, when you say the application was reviewed do we have an application in our packet because i don't we see don't one. have an actual planning commission packet we have the zoning application i thought that was included but it's not included it, it didn't get put into okay. the packet 
the zoning application serves as the actual application. Do you mind passing that around so I can see? Sir. Any questions of staff, Mr. Thurston? Uh, have we, uh, has anybody reached out or did the applicant reach out to their neighbors to see what uh, they might think? And by neighbors, I don't mean the entire Nottingham neighborhood. I mean the adjacent ones in particular, the next door neighbors. Staff did not. Um, I do know we, planning commission did approve a prior application back in 2016 for a similar use and, and on the south side roof location on South Dorset. Um, I don't know if um, Paul can speak to that. They talked to any of the neighbors or anything. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I remember that application, and I think. If I recall correctly, um, the, the, even the south side of that building wasn't as visible from the street as the south side of this building is. If you're going north on south north side, it, it's on the side portion of the It's visible. It's visible. I, I seem to recall, though, that there was some discussion about the neighbor making, you know, making sure that the neighbor was okay with it. It's not part of our formal process. I understand that, but... I would certainly be interested to know what the neighbors to the south of uh, 882 might think. Excuse me, sir. You want to come to the podium, state your name and address? And why you spoke up? <laughs> hey, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that it is only for the one side of the... What is it? Your name and address, please. Paul Grunick at 200 South Cypress Avenue, Columbus, Ohio. Thank you. So I'll, all I was stating was the fact that these panels on the south side are only visible from that uh, neighbor to the right of the property. So uh, they are flush mounted, so they're not sticking off visibly. They're pretty much almost right onto the roof point, but uh, just two inch gap, just enough so there's not going to be um, anything uh, damaging to the actual shingles itself, and um, they're also again a non uh, non reflective coating, so there's not going to be any kind of hindrance to the rest of the neighborhood. Any other questions of the speaker? Just just more curiosity. Anything else? It's shown in blue in the color here, and I I presume that's just so that we can see where it's going. Absolutely, they're actually black on black, so there are they yeah. Are not that's blue. what I figured. Yeah. I've never seen a blue one before. No. Any other questions? And the idea is this is going to power the house? Yes. Yeah, so what, it, house. what is it? No, we're going to, it's going to be a, for what I get, gave for them, their energy savings should be around 60% of their uh, total energy usage. So it's basically we're going to reduce their uh, cost to the utility company to 40%. And once they pay the panels off, pretty much all that energy is going to be generated for them for free. So it raises their property value and it decreases one of their bills. Thank you for the information. No problem. Well, I agree with Mr. Titterton's concern that this is going to go in and the neighbor who is going to most affect is not aware of it. I don't know that that's going to cause me to you know, vote against it, but I think it would probably be at least a good courtesy to, to do that in the future. May, may I suggest perhaps an affirmative vote conditioned upon the approval of the next door neighbor? And if not, they can make the reapplication re come back to us for other consideration. Well, I would be concerned to hear the next door neighbor's approval before I give them the final say in whether it's yes or no. Well, we can certainly table the table. I made a habit of tabling motions, so I'm not going to do it this time. <laughs> well, I, I guess my curiosity question is when I look at these pictures, the one on the bottom where it's showing us the proposed location. Mm -hmm makes it look as if, I, at first I almost thought it was a vacant lot to what would be the left as I look at this house. But the houses are the same distance back from the street. So I guess I'm struggling to see the how much would actually be visible, I guess. It, it doesn't seem to me that the visibility would look like it looks from the perspective of this picture, yes, of the proposed location. I'm just for clarification, I was standing in the middle of Crossbow Lane. Um, okay. 
just trying to take an overall picture for you. I, I did use the blue in the picture to so that's why Mr. Gary said so you could actually see it on a printed paper. Um, okay. All the all the houses are set back almost exact same distance mm -hmm. um, because the wider lots, you know, that side of the house is a little more visible. Okay. Um, yeah, that's luxury they were afforded in that development. Um, but if you look at the top picture, the, you can see the, the rest of the houses on that mm -hmm. southern side. One of, one of the things we have to consider is what, what the code says, the code of ordinances, and uh, it, it indicates that it can be on the uh, visible from the street without planning commission approval. You know, if we wanted to change that and just say it just can't be on the street side, we can. But this is certainly you taking a streetscape view, and it's certainly visible from the street. So I had my concerns. Well, is it? I know, I know. It's there are exceptions, but isn't the general rule typically that these are more likely to be on the on the garage than they would be on a main part of, of a roof line? And if so, we would be running into many rejections if we had a blanket, you know, yeah. issue. Um, I, you know, the fact that it's two inches above and it's almost flush with the roof and it's black on black. It, it's not blue on black. Right, right. It's <laughs> pretty stark. Sure. I just would hate to have a neighbor come come up to the next planning commission or full disclosure to my house or <laughs> to some other staff who live in that uh, general area asking why we did this without getting their input. Right. Okay. I so. don't know the the people that live there. It's just <laughs> so. And just one thing, sorry, just to, if it's the uh, about the neighbor issue, that's the main concern. I'm actually stop planning on stopping by the Gremlins. I was actually hoping that uh, one of them would be able to join me today. I didn't realize, find out until yesterday that I was coming and couldn't get a hold of them, unfortunately. So uh, I can, I'm planning on stopping by their home after this as well, and I can stop by the neighbor and ask them for their input. And if you have a number for them to reach out to to give the uh, their consent or uh, their feedback, I can would gladly do that. Well, if the owner of that property next door would give us a written consent mm -hmm. that would go a long way i think in determining what we might want to do all right okay. thank you sir what do we want to do today well, mr chairman based on the schedule i don't know what their time frame is we're not meeting again this month right so the next yeah, meeting would be in two weeks. In two weeks, so we are going to have a meeting then. Yeah. okay but not the 26th we know we'll probably have at least one item on right correct yeah you're planning on having it might year. be the last meeting of the year. Yeah, we could. So we could, we could table this until meeting. the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess you know the only concerns I had, and Al, you were around back then, in the '70s and '80s, when we were in the gas crisis. <clears throat> you know, these rooftop units were going up like wildfire everywhere, and then they didn't work well. They took a lot of maintenance, a lot of more the hot the water circulation. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a result, a lot of people just left them on the roof when they weren't working and they became eyesores. And I think that's the biggest concern I have. And I, I trust now that, you know, you've got zoning regulations in place that if it's a detriment to the property and becomes, well, unsightly due to lack of maintenance, that there's ways to enforce that. Uh, obviously, you know, five or six years down the road, because that's sure. These things look great when they're first put up. I, I, I encourage people to do it. It's a good idea, but the, uh, you hate to see it be neglected. You know, it's like paint peeling on a house, and then and they're just walking away and leaving it. Are, oh, sorry. Are you talking about the like uh, for your concern was that they are going to be malfunctioning, or the the panels? Well, the malfunctioning that's 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 a choice of the owner whether they want to you know maintain it in working condition. But as far as as far as looking appropriate. Okay, and, I, and this is no this is no reflection on the industry itself. It's just that you know if, if 
the, the, the surface gets broken, for instance, you know, and nothing gets repaired, it's just left up that way. So the, um, the, if you're thinking of fragile panels, you're thinking of very common theme of polycrystalline panels. They were very popular in uh, Florida and California where the weather is very stable. Uh, they're very fragile because they're made of multiple components. We use a monocrystalline panel. Mm -hmm. We test them with two inch hail balls going 80 miles per hour. We hit them with flamethrowers. We run over them uh, with armored vehicles. So they're incredibly durable. And out of the last hundred, well, last one million uh, panels uh, produced, I believe we've had 80 that we actually had to do any type of repair work for. Uh, so from that, from man, from the warranty perspective, so that's less than 0.008 percent of uh, any kind of actual malfunctioning, sure. and the durability of them are incredible, which are covered under the homeowner's insurance without any raise to their insurance rates. So they would be much more inclined to actually get those replaced. The, you, nowadays. You ran over with an armored vehicle? Yeah, I've got a video if you'd like to see it. <laughs> an M60 tank weighs 50 tons. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if it's M60, but I know an armor, uh, one of them. <laughs> Any other questions of this speaker? Just, uh, just to, maybe to, to help Mr. McGarry um, uh, ask a question to the staff. Under, section, you, and, under section G of 1151, it talks about abandonment. And there's a whole process. If they abandon it, there has to be a hearing, and we can order demolition of the uh, enhancement under the alter alternative engineer uh, en energy source systems. So I think yeah, leaving it as an eyesore. I think I think we covered it. In yeah, I, I feel I right? feel comfortable that we do have that. Okay. We do have the bite to do that. But that, you know, my, my, my concern just goes back to what we saw in the 70s and 80s, you know. Some of these things just sat up there on these roofs and they got deteriorating. Deteriorated with them. Time. Okay. The commission needs to make a decision one way or the other or make no decision. Uh, what is your pleasure? I move. Will we table it for the next meeting? There's motion tabled by Mr. McGarry is your second. second. And then wait for, uh, a, you know, for them to get input from the owner. Here. Second by Mr. Titterton. Please call the roll. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Titterington? Yes. Mr. Wolke? Yes. Mr. Capers? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mayor? Yes. The motion is adopted. Okay. Now to the other matters section. Does the staff have anything else they want to bring before the commission? No, I believe, uh, I guess the three tabled items will be at, on the agenda for the next meeting. You don't, you're not ready to proceed on any of those tabled items? That's correct. And I see two of them here. <laughs> What's the third one? The one you just oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Long day. Okay. Uh, anything uh, for staff? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. And second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we stand here.